Hello, this is J Dog John Carstrom. You are watching the Garden Corner Show. We are passionate about everything gardening. Only problem is, we're real. Hey, uh, I'm here with Mr. Dave. We are doing. How are you, Mr. Dave? Doing all right. You doing all right? You, uh, you know, we've warmed up a bit, but I noticed you have. You got one glove on, one glove, off, one glove off. <laughs> so he's kind of half warm. Hey, I want to do a reality check on. We've just gone out of the cold and we're warming up, and I think it might be 40 degrees. Yes, maybe. 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 It feels like it 40. A lot better. It does. It feels a lot better. Uh, but but some of you have this really big guilt thing about gardening that that if you had if you weren't outside throwing your body across your plants that you weren't a good gardener. But I want to show you what the professionals. What happens to the professionals? And, and of course, we run a garden center out here, and we do everything we can to keep the plants looking the absolute best all the time. But, <laughs> but we just walked through, and we almost just cried because a lot of things are seriously damaged. Some things we can do things about, and some things we can't. And I thought we—I thought it would be great if you want to take this tour with us. And if you have the exact same things in the garden, it might help you. So, of course, I went over pansies. Pansies should be looking pretty limp. What they do is they just go limp in the, in the, in the very, very cold, but then they pop right back out. So I went over this on the video on the hanging basket, but certainly deadhead anything that looks bad. So also at 40 degrees, we can give things a good water if we don't have some, um, if we don't have natural rainfall coming. Also, one important quick point on that is a lot of times you'll find that foliage deep down inside that's, um, that you haven't plucked but, but it's been rotting. Certainly if you can go through and pluck that as well, that will prevent any of the mold and mildew coming on. So pluck your pansies. Okay, let's go through some more of that. Um, take a look over here. We've got some major damage and maybe some, maybe some not damage. Uh, we're looking at some ajuga here. Some ajuga is a very tough ground cover. Uh, this is called black scallop because it's a great black coloring on that. Though some of this, you can see, just didn't make it. Some things are looking... What happened was is that these were dry and then the, and then the, um, the weather hit. And so it either really killed them or they're on the process of dying. So what we want to do on any of the jugas is certainly cut that back. Hostas over here, this, is, this one's called outstanding. Uh, no, this one's called great expectations. Not to worry about the hostas, of course, because they die back naturally. So we'll just clean up that foliage. And then when uh, we'll clean up that foliage, and then when spring hits again, they'll come all fresh and new. Same with the acanthus mollus. Acanthus sometimes winters over. Um, evergreen, but sometimes doesn't on the really tough winters. They'll, they'll just uh, they'll just die back. So this will clear will will cut back, but they'll come back. So not to worry about that. Um, the ferns, the ferns are a big one. Some ferns are evergreen and they went over really well all the time, and some of them die back during the winter time. Here's the trick on any of the ferns that you might have. By the way, this one's, this one's called squirrel tail. Uh, uh, squirrel foot, I'm sorry, squirrel's foot. So it had these little really cool looking feet coming out. I think they're more like a rabbit's foot. Anyway, and I've got autumn ferns, sword ferns, um, deer ferns. Some of them, actually we'll take a walk and I'll show you. Some of them are gonna are be green, some of them are gonna be totally tan either green or tan, we're going to cut those back by Valentine's Day. Even though they're going to look great, the evergreens are going to look great, you're going to say, hey, why this guy's crazy, why do we even want to trim, trim those back? Because we don't want to mix old foliage and new foliage. I promise you, it'll, it'll, it'll come out. Let's take a look some more. Um, grasses, grasses, boy, these Hookahs really look sad. I am going to, we're going to cut those back and we're going to see what happens with these. 
you can tell by the way the green lime green hookahs really have a tough time uh, being evergreen where the purple type of of hookahs this is obsidian you can see handle that weather a little bit better uh, than the other colors so anyway we're going to cut those back most likely will come back nicely now some of you have grasses in your garden so if your grasses have a tan look, this is their natural way they winter over. This is a type of miscanthus. This is miscanthus gracilimus. It's a tough, upright grass. Some folks like, take a look over here, some folks like this tan. It's a stiff, upright grass, so it'll be like this all winter long. Some folks enjoy that look. If you do, run with it. If you don't, you may shear that back to an inch or two above the ground. So just take some big shears and shear that across. That's what we'll be doing. Definitely by Valentine's Day, shear that back, whether you like the look or not. Because what, what, you, what we don't want to happen is mix the, the, the brown coloring, the tan coloring with the fresh green colors. So things like a pampas grass, shear that back as well. well let's take a look at some other plants. Take a look at this sorry creature here. This is Agapanthus. Agapanthus, I don't think this guy made it. I, I don't think he'll come back and I think he's done for. So, a professional. Look at this, what happens to a professional. And what we'll do is turn around and just chuck this. Take a look for some more. Now, Nandinas, always, Nandinas are very, very tough. All kinds of weather. Sometimes, especially because it was so dry, you'll get that tan, uh, some of the uh, leaves brown out. So, best thing to do on the Nandinas is just give these a good hard shear back. You can do this now, you can do it later, but we'll give it some uh, good watering and fertilizing first of springtime. They'll pop right back. Some of, this is a Moon Bay Nandina, this is Sienna Sunrise, either one of those, and then I also have a Gulf Stream and a, uh, I can't think of the name right off the bat. Uh, but these uh, always can do well with a good shearing. Let's take a look at some more. Now I talked about the ferns already. This is an autumn fern. It's a generally evergreen, but we can certainly shear that back. Again, you can shear it back now or you can share it back by Valentine's Day, but I say Valentine's Day because that was just an unusual time to go out to the garden and share back your uh, ferns and of course that's what you want to do on Valentine's Day, right? So uh, here's, here is a type of fern, heck gosh I can't even recognize what this is, oh this is an oak fern, um, so <laughs> you can see that that doesn't um, that's not an evergreen fern, so we can shear that back. Right behind you, Mr. Dave, is a Daphne, Daphne Hutinia. This is a really, really cool Daphne, by the way. Look at that black leaf on there. It com comes out with a green leaf and turns black. Very, very cool. Now, this is just winter. It's just, um, it's just wilty looking, but I think it survived nicely. It's a very tough, tough plant. So we won't do anything with these right now, except, the Daphne Adora, this is the winter Daphne, because it was so dry, take a look at the, take a, take a look at the, the leaves on here, you can see how it browns, this will later on turn black, just because it got so, it was so dry and so cold, and this is where it was damaged. Now not all the plant is that way, so as you can see some of them, some of it looks very nice. On this guy, I wouldn't shear anything back yet, only because it's already set bloom, so in uh, January, February, it's going to start blooming. So let's enjoy the blooms, and then we'll cut that back after it finishes blooming. So on your Daphne Adoras. The professionals, look what they're doing. They're killing plants all over the place. Sago palms. Sago palms just do not handle the cold at all. They're great container plants, especially in Oregon anyway. Great container plants. I love them by pools. Just an unusual look, even in the front fronts of houses. It's just unusual. It kind of makes you driving and it you, 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 makes you turn your head because just unusual. But boy, this one didn't like the cold. They didn't like the dry. And 
Usually what happens on sago palms is they'll start turning yellow inside there and it just makes them ugly as all get out. But this guy pretty much is toast. So we'll be chucking these guys. Anyway. Oh, hey, I forgot the quote for the day. I got to tell you the quote. <laughs> In every walk with nature, one receives far more than he seeks. Thank you very much, John Muir. This is the show for the day. Live your passion. You see me right out of the sunset on the color TV screen.